Welcome to another episode of the Carry Trainer Higher Line Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Carry Trainer Higher Line Podcast. Very excited today. I've got two brothers, David Sharp and Paul Sharp, no E. Dave, real quick, we'll just start on that side of the table and we'll go around the table. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll talk about what we're going to talk about. Hi, my name is David Sharp. I have been working as a police officer since 2003. I've been in martial arts since I was 13 years old. That's about Eight seven years, years now. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I've uh, practiced jujitsu, boxing, um, Shaolin Sun Kung Fu, as well as uh, weapons forms with, Belisant, with the broadsword. And yeah, 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 broadsword. broadsword. I can dance like a mofo. <laughs> so, you know. But everything's a broadsword, right? Like, you know, your, your stick becomes a broadsword. No, so anything you do. Yes, everything's a broadsword. Yeah, no. <laughs> Don't try to justify it. Don't try to justify it, dude. <laughs> yeah. you know? Not to mention, it's really good with the, the uh, red camel hair flying around, um, you know? I have the power right? of gray skull. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The silk pajamas. Yeah, <laughs> really, really know. tie it all together. <laughs> really, See, that's, do. uh, you know, <laughs> really does. It takes a man to pull off that look. You know? Some people would have remembered you from the video that we did last year, where you played a police officer. Yes, yeah, yeah. Where I was the, <laughs> the jerk. I, I still laugh about those comments. My God, like people are like, "How did you get did this you video? Watch that? Did you?" Com yes, the comments are where the knowledge is found. Right, right. right. YouTube comments are yeah. where you find the knowledge. The, uh, the that's, lady from that's where it's at, man. The that's, lady from California. All the experts are they reside in the comment section. Yeah. The lady from Don't California who said that I was a lying murderous bully. <laughs> I would off. like to say Edge I wish bed. you well. Not you know. You know, I, it was just Did hilarious. you ask for her address? No. Yeah, a lot of people didn't understand that that was a pretend scenario right. like right. I one person actually asked how did you record this like did I like go speeding right. and like hope Just to get a drone up <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, put, I put a drone up when I saw the squad car behind me I'm like Whoop, yeah. I'm gonna need this yeah. I cleaned out of the trunk. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm like Drew, Drew getting the weeds. Drew's out there. He's yeah. like, My squad car was a me. Nissan Rogue, you know? Right. And they're like, yeah, how People did he do did this? People did think that. It was just kind of funny. How about but, you? What do you do? I am a retired police officer, and now I just teach uh, jujitsu. I teach some martial arts and a lot of self-protection strategies. Um, so I started training in, uh, geez, man, when we were little kids is when we started boxing, wrestling, kind of migrated through a bunch of stuff uh did that's you code for he beat up his little brother <laughs> pretty much you know <laughs> look what i learned today yeah, yeah, yeah. watch this it's called a pillow sack full of golf balls <laughs> <laughs> you know but uh no so uh yeah <laughs> not, too far, rocks, not too far from the yeah. truth but mm -hmm. uh yeah so we kind of had a little fun you know rough and tumble growing up um migrated through traditional martial arts like weishi ru and ishin ru um, judo too. Um, a lot of folks don't think of that as a traditional martial art, but it's got a lot of history. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu is a traditional martial art too. 13th century, right, is when yeah. that was first codified. Uh, so kind of migrated through that stuff, worked my way up to an instructor level in uh, Jeet Kune Do Concepts and uh, Filipino martial arts. And through that is where I discovered Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for the first time. So and, about 15, 20 years ago? Uh, 30, 1993. So 96, 97 is when I became like a, <laughs> yeah, sorry, believe, huh? right? yeah. Yeah. it's been a little bit. Yeah. You know? I was still a baby. Then. Yeah, I was, I was only 10. <laughs> I was the youngest the full instructor ever in the yeah. history. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, so 93, uh, I discovered uh, Conan Save uh, through a friend mm -hmm. who was also involved in Jeet Kune Do Concepts, a guy named Luis Gutierrez. Um, went to train with the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys and there wasn't that many there and Conan was one of the first Carlson senior black belts in the United States. Mind blown, you know, it felt like a child. Where was this, California? Miami, Okay. so Miami, Florida. I felt like a child, like I had spent my whole life training and I just got tooled. And so that, that began that journey there, the obsession with Jiu Jitsu, you know, and trying mm -hmm. to get good at that stuff. Um, Somewhere in there, probably like 96, 97, we started working with police departments, teaching defensive tactics through a sergeant at the Hialeah, uh, Florida Police Department. And from that, we developed the ISR matrix, which is intercept, stabilize, and uh, resolve. So it's ISR matrix. Matrix, yep, that's what we called it. And um, it's still out there. I'm no longer part of the company, but friends with all the guys that are in it, uh, and they're doing their thing, teaching it all over the place. Um, so we developed that, we re released a set of videos because uh, that's how long ago it was, 99, VHS, 2000. Uh, VHS, yeah. yeah. Just just beat Drag. the beta. Just beat the beta phase. <laughs> um, 
release that stuff out there, man. It was well received, featured in a bunch of magazines, SWAT, Black Belt, all that stuff. And, um, and then uh, got into law enforcement. So I moved, got the job in uh, a town near here. I don't, mm -hmm. know, if, can, I don't know if I can. You can, can say I'm whatever reti you want. I'm retired, so I can say I got a job in Elgin as a, at the police department there. And uh, so moved up here. Suburban Chicago. Land. Yeah, I left the, uh, left the sunny uh, Florida, which was a mistake, you know. Uh, I mean, not a mistake, but. What you meant? I know what you meant. You make a lot more money up here. You make a lot more money up here. Weather's uh, not as cool, but, mm -hmm. you know, hey, man. Uh, no it hurricanes. Seems like no okay. hurricanes. No hurricanes. Yeah. Sometimes a hurricane. <laughs> Ooh, you know what I'm saying? See what he did there? Yeah. Right there. <laughs> hurricanes. But, uh, man, yeah, it was... Um, it's been it's been cool to you know move up here and meet yeah. like-minded people <laughs> and uh, continue the journey, man. And uh, got into law enforcement, spent some time doing some cool stuff there. Recently retired, and now I'm focused 100% on uh, my jujitsu gym and boxing, kickboxing, yoga, all that kind of stuff. Just yeah, you guys just started a yoga class. Yeah, we just started a yoga class, and uh, the instructor um, Ariana Alia teaches yoga and her background is also wrestling so oh, she started cool. wrestling when she was a little kid so her approach to yoga is really cool mm -hmm. so it's based on that and it helps that she is a doctorate in physical therapy very cool that helps a lot too Not so just somebody that got a little certificate and yeah weekend workshop and yeah, came out with it like maybe, two hour that's my yoga bucks, certificate my yoga certificate was like i, I could did you guys ever see the yoga videos that we did True. i did man i dug them Drew. So I was digging that stuff. Drew wasn't sure about Again, it. Again, the comments were awesome. Yeah. But uh, this, is <laughs> this is stupid. This is so I'm wondering about you, you freaking hippie. You know, but uh, I was digging it, man. I thought that was good stuff. I, and I mean, as far as what the we shorts do, are too long. You know, we are, um, right? Those shorts could be tighter, Mickey. <laughs> right, I don't know. But, uh, you know, but the, I think, man, for what we do, yoga has, and, and yoga has a history, like with the Indian wrestlers, like the mm -hmm. great Gama, guys like that, they all did yoga, you know, to. You're not flexible. You're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how injuries happen. So all the, you know, the Indian wrestlers, a lot of their movements and stuff came out of that stuff. Sure. Hicks and Gracie has his whole system that's kind of looks just like yoga or well, even like simple jujitsu moves like shrimping. Right. You know, yeah. you get guys on the ground and they're like, mm, right, yeah. right. Just don't have flexible. That yeah, 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 right. the, yeah. more, the more bendy you are, the safer you are, man, the more comfortable you can be in discomfort, which is a sure. huge part of fighting sure, right. you know sure. whether whatever you know if i'm like cramming myself up underneath of a car well to try to get cover that's not comfortable it's but i can get comfortable in discomfort right same thing like some big dude manages to take me down and it's like got his knee on my face it's like oh i've been here before you know <laughs> less, I, pro less prone to injury from yeah. somebody just sent me a video the other day of a dude doing a lift uh However, you have your hands doing a freaking deadlift, yeah. and all of a sudden this, and he was big. He was yeah, like bicep a two, his up. bicep just goes, yeah, 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 yeah. it stands up. Like, yeah. of course, that's a, 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 you know, far end of the spectrum of something sure. like that. But right. I, I was closing a window like one of these upstairs a couple years ago. Was on the couch for like three hours watching Netflix. Storm yeah. rolled in. I went to close the window and had to like do this. Go. <laughs> like, like, like did, did one of those like something pop in my back like, <laughs> yeah. but like two weeks man two weeks yeah. you know something got Ooh, you know what i'm talking about though we've yeah. all done it yeah something yeah. got caught in my throat there yeah. i think it's called weakness weakness your wife had a, a blow to <laughs> yeah. exactly but she's, man to admit it. <laughs> she's got the voodoo doll she's right. like oh. mm -hmm. yeah no man that happens you know it's yeah. weird little things and um you know, guys tear biceps in, mm -hmm. you know, right. same, in the same, that's what I thought you were going to say is you tore a bicep. No. I have a friend that went to put a key back on top of a, yeah, right. <laughs> those are unterrible. Yeah, those are not tearing. The guy went to Maybe put a key break up your on. house down, but. <laughs> he tore a bicep doing something like that. Tore his bicep, little tiny tear, reaching up to put the key back on his garage door. And uh, just, he wasn't thinking, just like, whoop, pop, something snapped. Mm -hmm. Our and, buddy uh, Jared Reston just had his, his uh, pec reattached oh, yes, yeah. yesterday or the day before. Yeah, it's a frequent, yeah. you know, it's a common thing. And we build up so much scar tissue over the years, so many little micro tears mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. And then finally one day the body's like, you know what, you need a break, so I'm going to give you one. So, you know, right, and then you've got to take, you yeah, take a couple it. months off and just chill and do some yoga. And I bring up those simple things like the key or closing a window because then when it's like for real, some dude comes and clocks you in the back of the head behind the ATM, right. not a lot more exertion, a lot more uh, uh, tension on your joints and muscles than yeah, placing right. a key. Right. Yeah, right, so that right. little thing breaks you, something for real right. might really 
Yeah. Well, it's like the strongman competition we just did a couple weeks ago. This like guy we, pulls cars and tosses <laughs> trees and stuff. But if you break down like each event, we did five events over the course of four and a half hours. It's literally seven minutes of work. In that whole time. Yeah. yeah. In that kind whole time. Like a it's shooting like, match. Yeah, yeah. But again, for like the 20 seconds that we're pulling the, the you know, 17 ton or 17,000 pound truck, that's only 20 seconds we're pulling it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So at the end of the day, you need like three weeks to recover from that because do you so do much exertion. in between that to keep yourself like uh, yeah, juiced up? rolling and, and yeah. juiced up. Yeah, I yeah. do steroids in between. No, I'm and, saying, you know, <laughs> see, you're, you're, you're no. warm and ready to go. I, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Nobody here does steroids, for those of you weirdos that didn't right. get a joke. It's a joke. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, in between that, you there is a lot of guys who do yoga. So now okay. uh, they're doing like the whole, they, they call it moving yoga. Hmm. So they'll do like the poses, just like the, the sun salutation. salutation yeah. But they do it walking up it and together. going down the room, yeah. you know. Yeah, you and then together, there's yeah. a chick who's the freaking beast at the gym. And she uses a 25-pound plate, you know. Yeah. And cool. She's just a beast. But... Remember when Walter Payton was still alive? He did some ballet, and there was a video, and everybody yeah. like thought that was like the craziest thing in the world. And now, what thirty something years later, like it's it's crazy. I've got a buddy that was a uh, football player for the University of Wisconsin. He's in his sixties now, and his wife is totally into yoga, and he's all jacked up, like neck, shoulders, all that right, stuff. Right, right. And he just will not like. I'm not doing it. Like I'm not doing it. Like, okay, keep eating the Vicodin, yeah, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's keep not, hurting, man. Right. Keep being in pain. It's so weird, that machismo mindset that I just can't, like, stretch yeah, and right. look beautiful and breathe. And it, it, it's, a, it's a strange thing to think about. Like, if, it's just movement, mm -hmm. right? Like, we have to master movement. You know, because I'm not going to be able to control, say, a violent encounter. You know, violent criminal actors come after me. I end up in a violent encounter. I can't control the movement, I respond mm -hmm. to the movement. So, because we're always gonna be reactive until we can turn the tables and start taking it back to them. So in those moments, I might be in a compromised position. I might be, you know, like when I was a resident officer, caught trying to get my daughter out of the car, you know, by two dudes in the driveway. Different things like that happen. It's not like, I don't get a chance to go, hang on a second, you right. know, let me just <laughs> get loose here a little bit, you know, get, get a right. good, good right posture. Now. It's just, it's on. And whatever you have with you is what you have with you. It's old school stock car racing, right? It's like you run what you brung. So run what you brung. If you're not first, you're last. <laughs> and, uh, that's a, that's a, that. Thank you, Jesus, for my smoking hot wife. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and that, that's you know, it's, it's it's interesting to run into so much resistance from folks. And I think the tide's starting to turn a little bit because people are seeing health. Like mm -hmm. right. you got to be healthy. Right. You know, you can't protect your loved ones. You can't protect your family or yourself it's a, it's if a, you're not healthy. It's a societal thing. Like all of our fathers, don't cry, you pussy. Right. Rub oh. some dirt in we it. We still say that. Well, yeah. yeah. Do you know I mean, what I mean? Pretty much. Right. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Then you, you look at Eastern societies like China, you'll have 5,000 factory workers doing Tai Chi before they... Yeah, get their body And we body look at that up. like, that's weird. Well, they're all not overweight. They're all... They're, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I mean, if you only ate rice once a day, oh. you wouldn't be overweight either. Right? I mean, you know, no, like, uh, no, I mean, that's a whole other subject, the diet, but that we, what do we do? We get up, we stuff some wheat into our throat, slug a bunch of coffee, get in the car, sit on our ass till we get to the office and go sit. And, yeah. and then maybe we'll run on the treadmill or something before we watch TV right. and drink beer at yeah. night and eat more shit. Yeah, and then, oh, I don't know why I feel like crap. Yeah, it's interesting to see kind of, I, I think it's called Pomodoro, the Pomodoro timer type thing starting to pick up steam again. I don't know what that is. It was like an old thing back in the day. Is it a tomato? Yeah, but the tomato timer, like the timer for cooking, okay. you know, it's like a 25 minute timer or a 20 minute timer. Okay. So you set the timer, I'm going to work on nothing but this one thing for 20 minutes so I get this task completed. Whatever it might be. Whatever Typing it might a proposal, be. cleaning yeah, the floor. It is. And then I'm going to stand up, take a break and move for okay. 10 minutes. Then I'm going to come back. I like that. So every 30 minutes, you're giving yourself 10 minutes to get up and move. You dedicate 20 minutes to focus. Right. right? Yeah, this little Fitbit will like shake and let me know that you got right. 200 Time steps to, to take. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. So it's kind of a cool, you know, that I think like you were saying, we, we sit, but we don't think about the consequences of sitting. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't think about like, I've been sitting in my car for 40 minutes today. You know, I was sitting in my car for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. whatever it might be during my commute. And the damage 
You know, it was an interesting pronunciation. Commute. Commute. Yeah. Commute. Yeah. He's that French. Too. I'm French. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you know, that's the thing. Yeah. It's just you know, we look at it and we're, it's it's we don't think about the consequences and and we kind of forget or lose sight of if you're not moving forward you're moving back mm -hmm. like that's how life works right mm -hmm. we're constantly shoulder and resistance Did you just think so, of first or last again no 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 i was just thinking that's what i tell people all the time this relationship is like a shark if we're not moving forward we're dying what we don't baby come on yeah. now let's get this on <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> that's a totally different thing man like that's a totally different thing but yeah i'm always selling thing. baby right no, but so it's, well, when i'm typing and stuff too it's the same thing like my job I, I do a lot of typing i have to sit at my desk a lot so what i'll do is stand because you're scared up. to be on the street yeah i'm afraid you stand of people. and bend I over stand, or do you have yeah. a high desk now like no, you're making all those no i'm trying to get my doctor to write me a prescription for it so he's trying he's trying no but like, and it's also good because I had uh, mobility issues with my IT bands on my right leg. And okay. so what he did, had me do was like balance on one foot and then, you know, lean back, lean forward, do all that. So I'll do that while I'm typing. Just to create tension. Just to create tension. Yep, and yep. just to, like you said, get movement. You know, you, you got to move. If you stop moving, the, you know. The society we've created, never, never could we exist as humans where we don't work like we do right, now. Right, where right. you can type and get paid and have food show up at your right. house. You had to go move and do things. I'm always telling people, man, like that after you eat a meal, walk for 10 minutes, yeah. like that 10 minute walk. I used to eat Tums like they're M&Ms. You know, I started doing a 10 minute walk after I got done eating, everything started mm -hmm. like functioning a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Rudy Reyes, I, I, I talked with him one day about that. You know who he is? He looks like a Greek God. He was the, the Marine that uh, uh, Generation Kill, that HBO series yeah, yeah. Okay. was made about. He's always shirtless in every picture because he's, Jacked 50 year old man that looks like we all wish we could look, but yeah, it's what he says. Every meal he goes for a walk as soon as he's done right. eating. Yeah, 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 right. And it makes a big difference. Yeah. Like things move along. You're not like all heartburn. You don't because mm -hmm. you, you know after you eat, you just want to sit there and you want to take a nap. And then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now and you then it movement. begets more of that laziness. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. So we're just constantly battling that, you know, that time down. Because you know, think about. I always think of, I visualize it as swimming in a tide. The second I'm not paddling, the tide's pushing me back. It's kind of like a shark analogy. Yeah, so Except I'm not, constantly... non-sexual in nature. Yeah, not sexual in nature. So, and, and, you know, I'm constantly battling to move forward. So what is the so tide in this analogy? Life. Okay. Life is, life is constantly pushing you right. down. It's testing you. It's putting resistance on you. You know what Stephen Pressfield called resistance in his books, where it's just, you're going to run into resistance. It's how you adapt to that right. resistance is what's going to make you. And so... You know, if I'm sitting for 20 minutes, I need to get up and move because that's 20 minutes in of a, um, a debit, you know, that's yeah. a negative. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've got to make a deposit to counter that. Mm. So, yeah. Right. So that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> deposits. Deposits. So it's, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, interesting thing now how we, we, like, I'd like to always ask people like, what's the goal? Well, I want to lose some weight or I want to be more flexible or I want to be able to protect myself. But like, what's the real goal? And like it, people are looking for, like, I hate this term now. Somebody just wrote an article on it on the point I'm about to make, like life hacks. Mm -hmm. Like we keep looking for like these like shortcuts, you know, like do this and blah, blah, blah. Like there is no freaking shortcut. There is right. none. Right. Yeah. But people there is are, none. I just read something today where somebody else commented, like, I love Paul Sharp's blog. He always has these great life hacks. Like. We we're all like looking for these shortcuts. Like it's not, rather than revamping our lifestyle to live. Right. 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 Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have 10 life hacks on my blog. <laughs> <laughs> Please log in. <laughs> 1995 a month. 1995 <laughs> membership fee. A small membership fee yeah. for my life hacks, which will be, you, you got to work harder. You, you hear that constantly. Yeah, like work right. harder, dude. Yeah. That's it, man. Just work harder. If you don't, Consistent effort over time is the real mm -hmm. is the real life hack if there is one. It's just showing up every day, consistent effort, and just not quitting, not letting the little things sidetrack you, not letting right. little things, you know. And speaking of the little things, man, I hear this all the time, and I'm sure you guys do too. It's like I'm just not ready to do that yet, or I, I gotta Ooh. what I wait till I'm ready for this, or if once this happens, and it's like it gets back to the the hate speech by Matt Vincent, you know, it's like. You're never, if you're past, if you're older than 25, 
you're never going to have a better day than you are right now. It's kind of going downhill. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're right. You know, like, I'm not going to go out and think, yeah, exactly. I'm not going to say, I'm going to dedicate my life to training for the MBA. That's, that's not going to happen, right. you know? So, like, I'm never going to be better than so I am quit. right now. No, no. Get your ass off the couch and make it happen. <laughs> like, you know? Leave, yeah. I'll see you guys Stop, later. You know? Right, Charlie, go get us some beer. Right. Yeah. Just drink and yeah, do nothing right? else. But I mean, you hear these people always waiting for tomorrow, waiting for this imaginary thing to magically happen, and then they're gonna go do that powerlifting meet. Or once I get strong right. enough, once I'm, once I'm yeah. way past my prime and right. my testosterone right. levels are as low as they'll ever Possibly be, get. then That's I'll start lifting. Yeah. <laughs> once I've been training jujitsu for at least 10 years, then I'll enter that tournament. Right. Then I'll, once I, I lose 10 pounds, then I'll go to the jujitsu school. And it's like, no, you just don't. go, you know what I mean? Like, just do it. Just stop it. Just do it. It's like death is waiting for all of us it and is. it doesn't tell us when it's going to show up. So go do it. You know what I mean? Which is, which is kind of back to what I was just saying, not to reiterate what I said, but I'm going to say it again. Is it's like people have, they, it's that like, <laughs> it just repeats the, himself. It's, it's, all, it's, it's the deja vu all, all over again. mindset of how we approach yeah. our life. Like it is the goal to have like a good life or is it to like get a, plaque that says you lifted some weight or are you lifting the weight because it provides you some benefit like mentally physically right. is it uh, you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. Makes sense absolutely no? yeah, yeah it's like why are you doing it at all guys heads or it is right. Right. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. i'm just, I'm just yes. nodding along because i don't want to be dumb we're being recorded, i don't want people so to think like, i'm yeah. stupid uh -huh. so i'm like yeah, yeah man yeah. yeah dude i get it totally yeah you know what i'm saying though yeah absolutely yeah it's like what's the point of doing it at all i'll have why do you get all and say hey i want to attend your class but do i get a certificate and it's like, well, yeah, we give you certificates, but like, is that the deciding factor? Like, do you want a piece of paper? Like, I'll print you one that says that you're a Congressional Medal of Honor winner. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. we can make yeah, it say make whatever. whatever. Right. Yeah. But like, does it change like the, what you're trying to learn? And that, yeah, that's, right. that, that's kind of where I was driving at. Like people focus on like the guy that has everything, got the fancy house, the hot wife, the car, but he's miserable and smokes himself. Right. Clearly right. that stuff didn't do it. I'm looking at my dog, what she's looking at out there. Right. right. She's tracking yeah. them. Well, and, and you know, to that point, like one thing about the uh, unthinkable seminar that mm -hmm. Paul does with William April, mm -hmm. they do the class beforehand and you watch these videos and you see that there's real evil in the world mm -hmm. and you discuss that. So it takes putting holes in paper to a whole new level. Like you're not just out there shooting and blowing off ammo. You're thinking, you know what? That video I saw of that guy who was just stomping this infant to death for no reason. This is what I was doing. You know what right. I mean? Like you have a, a, a drive to what you're doing. If you guys don't know who William April is, check him out. Yeah, check out William April. So yeah, I mean, I just think that back to the whole like, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, why do we meet in box? You know, why do you do? Because I jiu enjoy you in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I don't tell. He has cameras in the shower. <laughs> just so you know, I noticed them. <laughs> so you know, I mean, it's just one of those things. Like, why do we do this? You know, it's for you know to feel good, to have a good life, know that we can protect people, mm -hmm. walk around confidently. You know, and you can. I'm sure you guys have done it. You do some people watching. You can tell the people who are confident, who are walking through life, and the people mm -hmm. who are just beat down and. Mm -hmm. just waiting for sweet death to take them away you know well that's part of the avoidance deterrence de-escalation uh, kind of triangle that andy stanford came up with right you need a marker board i uh, know not at the moment <laughs> but uh you know because uh, <laughs> we'll start playing tic-tac-toe yeah right <laughs> i'll get distracted Cat add game. will kick in the other add but uh yeah i mean that's what he talks about like you know you carry yourself a certain way and then you actually will probably go the rest of your life without a fight mm -hmm. because of right. the way you carry yourself. So then you have to examine, well, why am I doing this? Right? So after about two years of any kind of combat sport, you're going to be able to handle yourself. Two years of any kind of dedicated practice with uh, edge weapons, impact weapons, and a firearm, in addition to some boxing and some jujitsu, you're good to go. So now what are you doing? Right? Mm -hmm. So then it's like, why am I doing this? You guys understand what he's saying? <laughs> Like, I'm talking to them now, not to, Do you understand what he's saying? <laughs> yeah. I completely tuned out, like, as soon as he started talking. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? So then, then we, we have to look at it, like, well, why am I doing this, man? Because it makes me a better person. Mm -hmm. You know, this is about, at first, it becomes about being able to beat the world. You know, mm -hmm. like, the world's out there waiting for me. I got to be able to beat it. Then it becomes about beating myself. Like, how do I make myself a better person? How do I become a better dad, 
but or whatever, friend, brother, sometimes, um, you know, <laughs> lover. Like, how do I become better at everything that is me? Mm-hmm. You know, and and then that becomes the journey, man. You know, and that's where I think sometimes I've lost sight of the goal. Sure. You know, because it's continuously. You know, we're talking about you losing sight of the goal. <laughs> Pretty much <laughs> all the time, right. yeah. and other things, <laughs> yeah, amongst right. you know. But yeah, and so I think sometimes you know. I mean, I'd like to hear, you know, you guys' thoughts on, like, why people do this, what continue, why, why we continue to I do this. I want to clarify one thing just to make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. Are you saying that you can take the skills that you applied to learn, say, jujitsu, mm-hmm. and take those skills and apply them to parenting? Yes. And maybe to being a better neighbor? Yes. Okay. Just want to make yes. sure. Because I, I preach that same thing. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that's what you yeah, were saying. Yeah, absolutely. Like, this should be about that total you know, package that total, you know, developing ourselves in all areas concept, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, Chris Howder says all the time, like, think street, train the sport, practice the art. Like, eventually we circle back to the life practice mm-hmm. of everything we do and you know, not to get too far into like, you know, quackery, but, but I like quackery, but you know, we want to get into like, why do you do this? Once you reach a certain point where you're deadly enough, like you're probably more deadly. I than want to me. throw chop you right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you karate is shit. Yeah, right? <laughs> you want to catch these hands, <laughs> you know? But we get to a point where we we're probably good enough. Sure. You know, you get to that point, you know, where you could probably just do a sustainment dry fire routine, a sustainment fitness routine, and be good enough and not dive any deeper. So then, what motivates you? What's driving you? That's the point I was driving at a moment ago is like when we come to the practice, mm-hmm. yoga, jujitsu, painting, like yeah. if is it just for fun or is there some deeper uh, metaphor there? There's a famous instructor that I've, and I, I'm going to stop there, famous instructor that recently posted something that basically said, people that say what we just said are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. And, I, and I read it and I was like, because he was saying, like, there are people out there that think, and he may read this or one of his followers might, and then they'll know that I'm busting on him, but whatever. He goes, there are people that think that if they're successful in one area, they can apply that to success to anything. And he's like, that's bullshit. I'm like, right. well, sure, I'm not going to be like you said. I'm not going to be an uh, NBA player. Never going to happen. Right. I mean, it's like not. there's no chance. Now, somebody could say, go ahead. I'm just, just to point out the obvious, like Elon Musk. Sure. You know what I mean? Uh, he starts PayPal, and now he's got SpaceX, or mm-hmm. he has the SpaceX he has, and then, you know, he's also got a mining business. He's also got, the, uh, uh, you know, a little the, the car cars, company, yeah, you may have heard company. of it, I don't know, you know? I mean, so if, if that were true, then he wouldn't be able to just jump from one to the other to the other to the other, you know what I mean? It, somebody could also it. argue, though, that um, Mary Lou Retton, uh-huh. who some of these people have never heard of, gold medalist, right. could have been the president of a fortune 500 company i believe she could have if she chose yeah, she to. chose to she has the dedication yeah, to she chose apply to, to. It. yeah so i just brought that up because i think sometimes people hear this and they're like ah eh, that's bullshit like shooting shooting shooting's not being a parent yeah. but they're not seeing the deeper meaning of what we're yeah. talking about yeah they're not seeing that that constant investment in yourself Mm -hmm. that you don't see right away like you don't see an immediate return upon six weeks five days a week 30 minutes a day dedicated dry fire practice which i think when you get the person that like wins the gold medal and then falls apart it's because their goal was to win the gold medal not and they don't have another challenge right Right. it wasn't to be the best version of me it was to i gotta have this and now maybe i'm talking out my ass a little bit because i'm not a gold medalist but that seems to be the issue, right? It's, and it's maybe not even just the challenge in my head, it's that the goal was to just attain this thing, not to attain like an enlightened, better version of myself. Right. What do you think, David? Well, there, I mean, there's a, a guy who, um, who won the Highland Games numerous times. And you he, love talking about these. Yeah, I do. Well, he was just like, he was like, you know, after, he's like, I learned so much from losing or coming in second and third mm. those years before, because after I won and I was a champion, and I was like, now what? Mm-hmm. Like, like before he had like literally notebooks that he wrote on the plane flying back about how he's going to change his training and okay. where he fell short. And then once he won, he was like, well, this is kind of it. He's like, and then it became, okay, like we're talking about, like now I'm going to start throwing for 60 yards instead of 
58. How do I get 60 yards instead of 58? You know, and so like we're talking about these different challenges for yourself and how we're going to get there. And I think that's that's part of what we talked about that today when we were boxing. Yeah, I told you your boxing versus my boxing, not me versus you, because like just like your jujitsu is my jujitsu versus your jujitsu. Because if it's me versus you know Paul, I'm going to win. But it's like. It's it's just ridiculous. Not even first. Like everybody four. has a dream. Yeah, everybody <laughs> has a dream. <laughs> but what you said to me though was, you're a much better boxer than I by by leaps and bounds and all that good stuff. And I'm scared of you. I'm physically. I'm phys he, he he hurts me. So so we're talking about it. And so when you I need an adult, <laughs> right? You need an adult. Man, man, you need okay. an adult, bro. I mean, I can get you some help, man. But what we were talking about is, I said like it because his skill level is so much more advanced than mine. It, like he's drawing from the bottom of his well. I'm like trying to like it's everything I got. Yeah. So he started talking about how when he started in jujitsu, everybody'd smoke him, and so he began pretty bad too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He began, began fixating on. I started carrying a knife on the mat. <laughs> like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm gonna kill this guy. But you said what? I began to just focus on if I could just get their leg. Right. I'm just going to work on that. So then every time you rolled with somebody, your goal was, I'm going to get their leg. It wasn't, I'm going to beat them or tap them. It was just, I'm going to get their leg. And then you progress from there, right? Right. Kind of yeah. compartmentalize the training, right. so to and speak. Then, so then it gives, you, it gives you like little victories. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's less like, overwhelming. Yeah, it's not as overwhelming. And, and like being ADD and, play, and doing jiu-jitsu works perfectly together. There's so many things going on, Bodies you know? Rubbing. Oh, yeah, yeah baby. Trying Big to start time. a fire with our hey, belly can buttons. can we do this uh, no gi? Can <laughs> right. we take our gi tops? Why are we wearing shorts? This yeah, is right. so gay. Yeah, right? So, <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, I think, you know, like we were talking about with the, the life application uh -huh. and stuff, right? So like that, like somebody who comes in who has struggled with weight their entire life, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's overwhelming. Sure. How am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when I talk to them, they come into the gym, they've lost weight before. This is not a new thing for them. They've been through this journey before and it really, you know, they're, they're kind of, a lot of times they're kind of down on themselves. Like they really doubt they can do this. Like they're going to give it a try because they know they need to, but they have serious doubts that they'll be able to, to sustain it. Sure. And so what we do is we just focus on one piece. You know, we have a saying 1% better every day, right? right? So we focus on one piece. Like, hey man, how about today? You know, like eat, instead, eat your normal meal, but only eat like half of whatever dessert you choose. Mm -hmm. So like pudding, whatever, you, you name instead it. Instead of trying to make huge drastic changes Little where pieces, they empty man, the fridge out. Every day, right. at the end of the week, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good chunk sure. of calories that have been cut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not gonna hurt you, it's not overwhelming. You know, and then how about this? The second week, man, I want you to increase your water intake. You know, like, how about for, yeah, so like if you drink a Coke, that's cool, man. I'm not going to get down on you about that because you've got everybody in your life getting down on you about that. Probably every time he or she picks up a Coke, there's somebody there going, You're the nice guy. I yeah, going, hey, dude. But they've already been beat up and they beat themselves up. Their internal dialogue is brutal. So, my God. So. It's just, the way they talk to themselves is just unheard mm -hmm. of. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it makes me uncomfortable. Just, because I've heard it too, so. Yeah, so then it's like, hey, so you drink a Coke, drink a glass of water. That's all I'm asking you to do, man. Every time you drink a Coke, pound a glass of water to wash it down, please. That's all I need from you for this week. End of the week, what do they do? They increase their water intake. Sure. So what's that do? Makes them feel better. They start feeling healthier. Mm -hmm. It's easier for them to get on the mat. They can actually start to do the drills all the way through without stopping because they're hydrated. Makes you know, sense. And so little things like that, you know, that's how we kind of bring the lessons from the mat, from the range, from everything else, and we bring them into real life or into everyday life, which is you, you're supposed to be doing this stuff to teach yourself, right, to teach whatever part of that that's inside of you, spirit, whatever, soul, I don't know, man, mind, whatever it is, we're trying to teach that thing to drive this body, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and so that thing is what keeps you dry firing every day for six weeks even though you don't see any practice, uh, immediate benefit. And then on the seventh week, you shoot your test and all of a sudden you're better, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And so now Show you- Show me, send the floor. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that's it, man. And it's exactly same thing, it. like you drink more water. So now that week of drinking more water then becomes, well, hey, it's easier now. Can you do me a favor? Skip the Coke with one meal and drink water for that meal. Yeah. You know, and then by the end of, man, we're talking like, Three, four months down the road, this person's a healthier version of themselves. They bring a better version of themselves to their, to their world. And they've 
learned they can do things that they and right. sustain it right yeah and take right. it a little bit at a time man take a little bit at a time sure. and that's that's all that we do right like you can't fix somebody shooting mm -mm. all at once you fix a little bit at a time otherwise you overcoach them they get overwhelmed they're like i can't do this they're like i can't do this i've got a flinch i love that one i've got a flinch i can't fix it i've always had it mm -hmm. well, we can fix it but a little you bit just at gotta a time stop doing it that's yeah. what I say. You just got to stop doing it. Yeah. <laughs> quit doing that. Right. Would you quit doing it? It yeah. helps if you smack them when you say, yeah, yeah that right. helps a flinch. Are your parents out. ever proud Shot of you? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I mean, I think like, you know, that's the thing. If we, we overcoach ourselves, mm -hmm. we overcoach other people and we forget the lessons that we learned doing this stuff. Right. You know, like, oh, let me just focus on one thing. That's sometimes I think a fault of my own. Like I'm too introspective and like try to find too many meanings and shit and like try to find too many answers where it's just like, dude, like to me to myself, just like do that thing right there and sh yeah, up, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, just do the next thing sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. Try to get way too broad view and. Yeah, and, and that goes like weightlifting too, talking to Ed Cohen, you know, and he's talking about how do you squat a thousand pounds? And he's like, he's, wow. you squat a thousand pounds. And so it, it comes down to, you just get under the bar and get to work, you know? So if you just start working towards a goal, you'll get there. Yeah. You just, what's the saying is that we don't have unrealistic goals, we have unrealistic time horizons. You know, like if you want to make a million dollars, you can, but you're not going to make it by Tuesday. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. you need to. What? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just sent a bunch of money to this guy in Nigeria. Yeah, no. Who said he's sending me money? He said it's he's cool. a prince. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's just a timeline. You know, so I think that's part of it too. It's just kind of a funny story. I was trying to drop some weight, and I was using a calorie counter. Okay. And in the break room, there's always donuts. You know, and the donut I know was like policeman. Three hundred calories per donut. But I wanted to have drinks that night, and I know the drinks are 280 calories. Okay. So because I wanted to so stay you only in had my like calories. Four donuts. No, I stayed away from the donuts, and I had five drinks. So, <laughs> <laughs> Which so, wrecked your metabolism. Right. You just your insulin spiked. Everything. You know. But then I got in a fight with the girl, so then that fixed everything. So no. That fixes things. That happened. But I think you know. all of that happened. <laughs> 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 then I was running because the cops were coming to my house. I'm like, what's up? The last <laughs> you know? part was a joke. Right. Yeah, right. Somebody knows that. But, you know, I mean, it is like you just start with the little baby steps, you know, if you're yeah. just go for a walk, just dry fire, you know, just once a week or, you know what I mean? Just start with the baby steps and then you'll get to where you need to be eventually. You know? I think we look at problems too big. I've noticed this year, like four or five guys that I know personally that were really heavy. One of them, uh, Adam Peeney. Do you guys know the name Adam Peeney? We did a podcast with him. Adam's last big job was with Knight's Armament. Oh, yeah, He's yeah. lost like a hundred pounds yeah. in the last eight months. He uh, wants to be a cop, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. John um, uh, Johnson from, mm -hmm. you know, like he, he's lost, I think he said a hundred pounds since right. the beginning of the year. Like, I think there's a lot of people like in our uh, circle of friends and, and uh, associates that are attacking some of those things. And I've, I've talked to some of them, like John was like, what'd you do? And he's like, stopped eating like as much food as I was, you know, just like right. really cut the caloric intake and magically things change. Right. Well, I mean, it's not one of those things where I'm going to start walking for 10 minutes a day and then I'm going to lose a bunch of weight, right? It's, I start walking for 10 minutes a day and then I say, I don't want to have that other donut. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm feeling really good. I'm going to walk for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then it's kind of, going. right. It kind of feeds on itself. And then mm -hmm. next thing you know, I'm wearing spandex and people are going, Oh my God, my kids. Adam uh, Peeney said that he um, wanted to be able to run a mile, right. not in any specific time, just continuously run the whole right. mile and it took him like i don't know half an hour or something when he started now he's busting them out in 10 minutes yeah. and so that's like it was his increment then in, then he could do it in like a decent time he added another mile and, and it's been working great but it was the lifestyle change of food but then the right. little bits little right. bits and it gets to be daunting like how do you get to shoot like less mm -hmm. you know right yeah. just Pay less to shoot for you. <laughs> <laughs> Put this mask on. Yeah, Put right. this mask on. But it is the same thing. Yeah. It's the that that mindset that I'll I tell students like come up with a goal. Let's create actionable steps. Mm -hmm. Like the rich by Tuesday is not an actionable right. step. Like unless there's some way like rob eleven banks. Yeah. Right. Know, from well, Sunday and yeah. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. And then apply action to them. And then maybe from time to time look at the progress and say okay the swapping beer for donuts 
work then, but now my next goal is to get here and that's still not helping. So, well, so like instead of sitting down at the restaurant and having, you know, Coke, well, I'll have a glass of water instead. Do you, you drink know? Coke? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Do you drink pop? Sometimes. Yeah. Not I don't drink it all the time, you know, but like I will have I'm one. I'm not judging. I'm just asking. Yeah, yes, you are. Uh -huh. I can see it. <laughs> right? no. Yeah, no. <laughs> exactly. yeah man. No, I think uh, I, I try not to villainize food, mm -hmm. you know, because then that becomes an excuse, you know. Then that becomes like like we were talking about with guns and gear, and mm -hmm. you know, then that becomes an excuse. Well, I don't have those sights on my gun, that's why I don't shoot. That's true. Well, you know, okay. well, I have a weakness for cake. I have a weakness for this. Me too, brother. So, it, you know, yeah, right? And it's now like, no, man. No. But it's not, but here's the thing. Like, if you look at, so remember the... Do um, you really have a cake weakness? Do I? Yeah. No. Okay, go no. ahead. I mean, it's, there's m m milk and eggs in cake. So basically, it's a whey protein shake that's been baked. <laughs> so you could just... That's why I have two a day. Yeah, right? <laughs> but here's the thing, right? So there was a... a, a remember the Super Size Me? Yeah. Where the guy ate McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so then there's another guy that came out with a Super Size Me 2, which That's was where he... Fat heads. He, fat something head. like that, where he ate the same high. diet, but lost weight and got in great shape. It was hard because so he he's not out. Getting, working out like a maniac. Yeah, and he had the, the problem he had, correct me if I'm wrong, was that they, he couldn't get the actual diet plan of the foods that he allegedly ate on the Super Size Me and figured out the only way he could reach those caloric intake is if he drank a gallon of pop a day as well. Oh, God. So... Yeah, I don't remember Arnold, that part. But he, he, uh, he was yeah. eating like bags of McDonald's and all this other stuff. Yeah. And so, so ultimately... It's such poison, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're not getting any fuel for it. There's no yeah. value in that well, food. I mean, but the thing Sickle is... Ono, Chad Johnson, he would have like the entire McDonald's menu, and then he would go work out. Really? Yeah, he's legendary for that. But of course... He's a professional football player. He's Chad Johnson. He's yeah, not, that's not you know a normal I mean? person. Dude. Yeah. yeah, you can't he's, use those guys for normal He sprints 10 people. miles in an hour. So, yeah, literally. the thing yeah. is, yeah, but, you, you know, the whole point of all that stuff is just that, you know, if you villainize calories, you give yourself an excuse. Sure, I know? agree with that. So you have to just look at it like, or villainize food, rather. So you just have to look at it like calories in, calories out, you yeah. know. So if I'm burning more than I'm bringing in, I'll lose weight. Back to that whole thing we're talking about, like what's the goal? Is it to hate food and hate yourself for eating it or is it to be healthy and yeah. happy? Right. Yeah, it's like, you know, why have that self-loathing of, oh man, I got an issue with cake. That's my downfall. That's this, that's that. Sure. No, man, listen, you are strong enough mentally to manage that. So sure. have half of a slice of cake, right. half of whatever you right. would normally eat. Just have half, you know, give yourself that much. And then also take whatever you want to call it, solace or, you know, kind of like give yourself a little thumbs up in that, you know what, I'm strong enough that I could have a little bit of that and then say, I'm good and mm -hmm. walk away. Mm -hmm. Like you just mentally got tougher. And that's 90, 98% of the battle, man, is mental toughness. It's hard to take and revamp one's diet overnight too, because it's such a... Yeah, you're going to, especially the rest of your family's this, not doing it. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, what are you going to do? Yeah, so what, what I did when I decided to be vegetarian is I went in and threw all the meat out. And then my wife's like, whoa, where'd the steak go? I'm like, looks like we're having salad. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's I did not do that. I would have got shot. No, I did not do that. But, uh, but that's the difficulty. That's the difficulty, even in making weight, you know, for competitions, for fighting, jujitsu, whatever, you know, you're trying to make weight and everybody around you is eating. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a challenge. How long have you been vegetarian now? 2015. So about three, four years. Do you miss meat? <laughs> yeah. Why do I feel like I'm getting hit on? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. <laughs> no, but seriously. So, yeah. I That's do how it started man. with me. Yeah, yeah. In all honesty, yeah. There's times where I'm like, man, I, you know, my thing was always cheeseburgers. Mm. You know, like a good cheeseburger, yeah, man. What it's man just, doesn't like a delicious cheeseburger? Yeah, you know, that was kind of, you know, and, uh, and, and two kind of the the culture of the cookout you know you're hanging out with your buds and everybody's mm -hmm. chilling and you know eating a cheeseburger and linked just, meats yeah, right, all, that, right, yeah right. all that stuff <laughs> so it's yeah, something different that's, that's a, a totally different thing <laughs> but you know so the so guy that, has like, a hood in utah never mind yeah, so that kind of whole thing <laughs> so that whole yeah so you miss that part Docking, of it. they yes. call that but you don't miss uh i don't miss not being healthy i don't miss taking 22 medications a day i don't want to know you were on those kind of meds. yeah i don't miss not almost dying so yeah, mm. I don't miss that part. So yeah, after my aneurysm, I was taking um, between the opiates, the 
anti-inflammatories, the migraine meds, had migraines 24 seven for about mm -hmm. three months. Um, between all that stuff, it totaled out to be about 22. Some were um, preventatives that I had to take daily. Some I had to take as needed, mm -hmm. you know, and then some were for like in case of emergency. So about once or twice a week, I'd have to take those. So we eat up very little meat here, not because for any reason other than I just don't feel I need to eat as much meat as people think. It's interesting the diet fad stuff, you know. Yeah, like now for sure. everybody's on the keto diet, and right. yeah, I think it should make yourself happy. Yeah, eat what you want, man. You know, you you dig steak, bro. Eat a steak, man. I'm not. I don't guilt anybody. I don't shame anybody. I like steak. When I travel places, I get an opportunity to travel, you know, and uh, go hang out with my friends in different places and. You know, especially down in the south, you know, and uh, those guys dig their barbecue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, you know, they're like, well, you know, since you're with us, we'll have to find some uh, tofu place to eat. <laughs> some hippie. Yeah, some, <laughs> yeah, there's like a field over there for some grass. Uh, I'm like, no, man, let's go to the barbecue place. You know, what do you eat? All the sides. Okay. You know, the bean, they have beans, slaw, all kinds of good stuff, man. You know, corn on the cob. Those barbecue places not to throw down for yeah. sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I'll get the sides I'll, and I'll be full. I'll be fine. You know, I'm happy. My friends had a good time. That's all that matters to me. With no meat. Is that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no meat, right? But, I'm, but here's place, the thing. The more than anything <laughs> is the community, right? Yeah. Right. The friendships that we build doing this stuff. And so, and have, having that meal at that yeah, right. Breaking the bread, right? Sitting down at the table and everybody talking and, you know, put the phones away and let's just like have conversation mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. enjoy our time together. And I'm, I, dude, I'm not going to sit there and be like, you know how that cow was killed before it was put on your plate? You know, like that ain't gonna be like, tell me. How. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Like, I'm not gonna do that, man. Yeah, I'm like, that's not, that's not the time and place, you know, and that's not, and that wasn't my initial motivation anyway for no. that stuff. My motivation was pain. I was in pain nonstop. You know, my brain was swollen, so I had uh, brain hemorrhage with intracranial swelling was the actual definition of what happened or term for it. And so my choice was they're either gonna chuck, cut a chunk out of my head to let my brain air out because it continues to swell because mm -hmm. I'm not stopping the inflammation or, or I could do what my neurosurgeon is telling me to do, which is just try not eating red meat. Give me a month of no red meat and let's see what happens. And so I did. And then. After about three weeks of that, I was like, whoa, I'm feeling pretty darn good. And she's like, I told you, you know, and I'm like, yeah, just because you're smart lady right. doesn't mean you get to say I told you. But then I, so I talked to my wife and I said, hey, how about, you know what? I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to stop eating the chicken, turkey, you all eat fish? That. sometimes, not much, but sometimes, yeah, I'll have some, I'm a sucker for sushi, mm -hmm. you know, and same thing. It's a communal thing, right? We all get together, sushi, everybody digs it, you know, and you're kind of sitting all around a big table. And I'm hungry right now thinking about it. I know. That. See you guys. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, you know, it's a communal thing. You yeah. know, that's more important to me than anything. So, you know. Um, my, my only th thought about yours talking about not villainizing food is sometimes we attach. Oh, yeah, I just can't imagine my life without these cigarettes. I hear that all the time. Like, I smoked for years. Like, it's just. I can't imagine like having a beer without having a cig. Well, of course you can't because you can't imagine doing it. Right, 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 so then like right. the hostess, like, well, yeah, it's not the worst thing to eat it, but it's still not good. So maybe start to tell yourself it's really not that good. And I will instead invest my thought energy in enjoying something better just because I always thought it was good right. doesn't mean yeah, like, right. like I should keep doing it. I understand what you're saying is like it's not yeah, the end of the sure. world, but you don't need to drink Coke. Yeah. It's poison. Poison. Okay. Poison is cyanide. That's poison. Okay. <laughs> this is Coca-Cola. Poison is a horrible band. Yeah. Poison, poison is a horrible band. Yeah. I've heard people say that about milk too, though. Milk is poison. And it's well, just like, I don't drink milk because uh, I'm not a baby cow. I drink milk because it's delicious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I eat meat because it's delicious. I, mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to even harp on the different <laughs> foods that are good or no. bad, but I think sometimes like we attach, for example, well, it's low fat. Thus, it's good to eat. Well, no, dude, that's marketing. Like, it's not good to eat. It's not good for you just because they labeled it as such. So yeah, it says so right on the right What's that? It says so right on the container. Yeah, right? For or like heart you healthy. You can't write that unless it's true. What's that? Should, I mean, at the end of the day, only performance counts, right? Right. So, like, from everything from the way I shoot a pistol or a rifle or shotgun to the way that I try to walk is performance-based. Mm -hmm. Like, our body finds, it chases performance. So... How do I feel after I eat this food? Right. 
you know? Like, well, that's the other thing. People don't know how they feel because it's always the same. You know, they always when you're, feel bad. Yeah, when you're always like that, you don't know until you spend two, three weeks not on the stuff. Right. Two, three weeks not sitting every day for eight, nine, ten hours. Drew's like, damn it, every time he swears, I got to push the beep button. <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> like, it, they don't give it a shot. Yeah, you just know, try to, it, like, man. Actually... Just do it, do it a little for a little. You know, the biggest thing people could do is just drink more water. Yeah, I agree with you. That's the biggest thing, because that's the biggest performance inhibitor is dehydration. Even a slight bit of dehydration, you know, and all of a sudden your performance starts to go down. I always I'll ask students, like, especially when it's hot, are you peeing? And guys look like, you mind your own business. And it's like, no, dude, like, I literally haven't seen you yeah, walk to the right, Porta John right, yeah, all right. day. Like, you're not peeing, and people, you're right, people don't even... They don't even think about it. And then what do they do? They go drink beer after shooting, and like there's their rehydration. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And well, it's kind of a water. teaspoon of I mean, salt, salt in, the, uh, in your sea water, salt. too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a little sea salt in yeah. the water. Yeah. Helps your routine, keeps it on the board. Otherwise, it'll, it'll dehydrate you. Yeah. Electrolytes, man. Yeah. It's a good tip. Yeah, it's from Idiocracy. It's got electrolytes. <laughs> right. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but no, that's important. A little bit of sea salt in there and. You right. Know, it'll, it'll help you it. Yeah, help you retain so it. So we've got two badasses here, and all we're talking about is water with sea salt. <laughs> if somebody was to spend, uh, if somebody was to, if somebody, somebody says, uh, uh, but it's an interesting right, conversation. Right. Okay, I want yeah, to, yeah. I, well, no, because there's many people like there's the, my my favorite story all times heard by um, Mark Bell is that Stan Efferding is doing a powerlifting competition and he's feeling like crap and he's about to go to the hospital. Okay. And Mark Bell says, no, 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 no. That's not how powerlifting works. You still have to make another lift. And then they start looking into what he's doing. He's drinking Gatorade and water to stay hydrated. Well, he's throwing up and he's getting dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So that's when he started adding the sugar, or the, I'm sorry, the salt and some other things to his water, potassium, and then he goes on to set world records that, that same day. It's important, man. It's, it's crazy. important. Like people think, I'll just drink two gallons of water. Well, you're just going to get dehydrated. Mm -hmm. Everything from your vision, yeah. right. vision, back pain, like just so many things that happen mm -hmm. with dehydration. Right. You know, so those the discs get, yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's in, it's yeah. And then the guys at the, the competition a few weeks back, it was pretty hot that day. Even though it was a nice breezy day, it was still hot out there. The guys who were just pounding the water were the guys who they went downhill fast. You know, the guys who were doing the the salt in their water and everything else, and were actually eating a meal and having fruit and whatnot, they did very well. You know, the people who went out to, uh, there's Wendy's, you know, they didn't do so good. So, you know what I mean? It's just kind of funny how, like, big surprise, you know? <laughs> so but Wendy's isn't no, a good workout for mm -mm, gotcha. No, gotcha. no. But, so, I mean. So, you guys carry around your bottle like I do. How much salt per unit of water? I put a teaspoon yeah. in a gallon jug. Oh, so not a lot. No, yeah, no. It's just, much. you don't really even really taste it. It's not. Cause that's what I was afraid of. First time I did it was a tablespoon. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take much. Yeah, it doesn't take much, man. Yeah. So one of the 18 deltas that we work with carries around electrolyte packets. So yeah, those uh, help. Yeah. This is new new tablets. It's a new tablet. You put it in like a bottle of water. Those things go a long way. They're great for like when you're camping and hiking and yeah, stuff like that. Sure. Rock. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's so, a fizzy drink. So what we're talking about, again, is little things that make big differences that I think people overlook because they always right. do the same thing. Like, I used to work with a dude that would bring two two liters of Mountain Dew Ooh, to the job okay. site, and that was Whoa. his that was his beverage, man. Like you got out of the truck, we're all smoking cigs, drinking coffee. He's like at, a spider monkey on crack, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's framing like carpenter, at you. and that's what he looked like. He was a little skinny dude, yeah. half his teeth rotted He's just out, rocking out, smoked yeah. two packs of cigs a day, and. Look, 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 look. And like he'd finish it and twist the bottle up and whip it and go go two liters. You know, he drank two two liters of Holy Mountain cow. Dew. That was his. That and, was and then like that night toxic, was, that was alcohol. That is a toxic yeah. shit storm happening right there. Yeah. I don't even know if he's still alive. Trash. I think he's actually dead. He would have probably died. Uh, <laughs> I would imagine. Seven, eight years ago, <laughs> yeah. maybe. Or he had a come to Jesus moment where his right. body was finally like, hey, man, you got to give us a little relief here. Mm -hmm. Like, we can't do that. Make some changes. Right. You know? But people look at that stuff and to them like water with salt right yeah like, sounds you, insane yeah, like you're right. if you drink salt water you'll die yeah no. we're not drinking salt water <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not salt. but it's just all part of like pushing right. that edge of human performance right human evolution like i want to be out on the edge of it mm -hmm. you know for the longest time i wanted to be out on the edge of like what can i do to perform at my highest level and whatever it is i'm doing mm -hmm. you know and so like that stuff like life hacks Right. Yeah, life hacks. Total life hacks. <laughs> yeah, speaking of life hacks, you know, and, and to get back to what you're saying about vilifying, vilifying the food, it's like Christmas time. I don't ever want to 
like not go to family gatherings sure. or not eat the cookies and whatnot. So I adjust my workouts. That's when I'll do, like around Christmas time, you know, I've done it for years, I'll do the German volume training. You know, we're doing 10 sets of 10 for these exercises and I'll go at four o'clock in the morning if I have to, to make sure I go to the gym. My, uh, I was trying to cut weight and my, my nephew graduated from the Navy boot camp. You know, we were going out to the Cheesecake Factory. I, I'm not gonna sit there and have a glass of water and a squirt of lemon, <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like we had the nine layer chocolate cake and, the, and everything. But I also had an extra 75 minutes on the treadmill, <laughs> you know? So you just, you gotta make a, those adjustments. When yeah, you, when what's do important to things. you. Right. Yeah. Is that piece of cake or the Christmas cookies, is it the tra something you're willing to trade that time in the gym for? Right. Because I go into the Cheesecake Factory with my little Tupperware is just not living to me. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, just, I can't out do that. chicken breast and some broccoli right, in there. Right. So maybe, maybe some white rice. Mm -hmm. No, not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's, it's important that you, you know, kind of balance everything out so that what is important, you know? But this spin is back to what I was saying. I just spit on you. Sorry. Oh. You are still telling yourself that that cheesecake factory shit food is what's important now no, i'm getting no, no. into preacher mode no 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 because it was about hanging out i know with i'm him. just saying it to right. you but i'm saying like that's the thing people still say i can't live without this thing right well yeah you can man you just keep thinking that you must have this thing it's like a toxic relationship too like you know, like, <laughs> it's not you, it's me. Yeah, right. Just take right. that. Right, right. right. But you like, you like, what do you, we can you hang on to these sick relationships because I just can't, I, like, it's f as it is. He hurts me. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's got to come. All right, all right, all right. Try, try cleaning the house a little more often. You know what I mean, though? Yeah. It's a, to me, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm, like, how I see it in my head. Like, I, I can't see myself without the SIGs or the Cheesecake Factory. And I'm not... Cheesecake Factory is great <laughs> if that's what you're into. That's what you're getting, a gift card for Cheesecake Factory yeah. for Christmas. But I'm saying, like, like what are we continue to, to proliferate that in ourselves, because that's what we believe. That's what we're... Right. So rather than that, like, hey, I don't need Cheesecake Factory. Right. I don't need it. I don't, I don't need it either. It. But it was, he's graduating, he wanted to go there, I'm taking it. I him. get it. Okay. I get it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not picking on you. Feels like you it just said bit. it. <laughs> I think it's the same thing of I don't run because it hurts. Right. I, it sucks, man. It's no fun. It's no fun. Like my one brother always says that. Well, yeah, it is no fun. Right. But like maybe like listen to some tunes, think about something pretty while you're doing it. I don't know. I'm just yeah. spitballing here. No, I, I think, think. Go ahead. Go, I'm just saying. I think sometimes we like try to find it, ways around very simple. Why do you keep flinching? Because you keep flinching. Stop flinching. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you can't tell them that. Like, there has to be, like, more to it. No, I literally tell them, stop flinching. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. That's Olympic level coaching, yeah, folks. Right. It's Olympic tell, level. Tell, Let stop. me write that down. No, Hang on. Right. We're, we're check it out. <laughs> Not to bemoan Note the to fact. Self. Not to bemoan the fact, but are Note we, to like, self. like, you just said to me, and, I, and it works for you. So again, I'm just pointing this out because other people will hear this or listen to this. So rather than just not do the thing, you're willing to exercise a bunch so that you can still enjoy something. Works. And you're a fitness guy, so that to you is not like a big deal, but to some like mom that to go work out for one hour a week is like this huge thing. Uh -huh. like. Time management. It's a revisit that just because we're talking about it. So that was like one time thing. I know. You know I just I mean? was picking. When it, I'm just like, picking it apart because other people yeah. will listen to that. When I pick up, say, a six pack of beer and go, okay, this is literally or or a, a not gonna have dinner for meal. three days. Right, yeah, <laughs> and I got to do two extra hours every hour on the hour for you know for six months to get rid. Of, then it becomes easier to say. I don't want this. Mm -hmm. It becomes easier when I say uh, a, a Big Mac meal. Because I know meal. that I will have to go do. Right. A Big Mac meal is from McDonald's is 1,100 calories. Yeah. Right. So I know that that is literally two hours of cardio work, which we all love cardio, right? So it's very easy for me to go, I don't need that. You know right. what I mean? I can walk right away from that. So, I mean, it, when you start getting these trade-offs, and you're talking about how we talk about we need stuff and whatnot, and how make it full circle please jujitsu comes back into all of our lives i'm sure you can you have the same story there's been females who have been in toxic relationships or even guys who have been in toxic relationships just tearing them down whether it be with food or and, and with um, pretty much and with other people in their life and as their jujitsu gets better and as they see that they're starting to they start to fall in love with jujitsu that this is taken away from their their jujitsu practice 
they will actually cut ties with that person who doesn't need to be in their life. You know, just so they can be more dedicated to this, their art. Sure. So it does make a full circle, even though like that person needed to go to begin with. Like they were just, it was just a toxic relationship all the way around. This is just a motivator. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just, just the little things like that that help you get your whole life going in the right direction. That's kind of was making that connection. Taking a long way to get there, but I got it. I'm, so. much, I'm sorry I attacked you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll settle up later. No, on our I think sometimes yeah. we come up with like, like silly. You and I were, Paul and I were talking in the other room before we, we started about filming. Behind my back? No, well, some, but we were talking about <laughs> uh, like people chase gear. Like, well, I can't shoot like Paul because I don't have this $5,000 custom gun. Uh, well, it's not a custom gun. It's a stock gun that's like all beat up with just sights on it. Right. Oh, well, your ammo. Eh, it's from Walmart, you know, like yeah, whatever. It's a box. Right. You know, it's good. Yeah. You know? But dudes are constantly looking for excuses. So to me, it's like, well, why not just take the, ex like, the thing that's causing you? I knew a guy that would, that would talk about like uh, shit going on in his home life cause him not to be able to perform at work. Okay, well, like, you, like, and this was he asking me about it. It was like, well, either like stop the shit at home or compartmentalize your life and don't allow that to impact this, which is easier said than done. But like, you're making an excuse to be a bad employee. Now you're going to get fired. So like, you have to somehow like identify and make a change. And the food thing, I don't know why we're like really harping on this today, but um, I'm really hungry. Too. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. 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 But like, like it seems like so many times the stuff is so much easier. Again, like the relationship, like you just brought up again, leave the person. You right. Know? Like if it's that sick, like you're not gonna fix it. So like maybe your relationship with fast food is not worth all of the angst or the meat. Yeah. You know, like hey man, I'm done with you. Meat, yeah, yeah. meat. Yeah. We had a good time. But you're hurting. <laughs> you're hurting me. <laughs> but you're hurting me. Right. I, I think you know. I think one of the kind of you know you look back and you have like game changing moments, right? Mm. And uh, I remember, you know, I went to the police academy. I had great instructors. You know, I had John Bowman, um, Herschel Davis, just some fantastic instructors there. You know, and um, and one instructor, I won't mention his name, but well known. Total douche, probably, huh? Well known uh, instructor, and uh, I was issued a forty-five eighty-six double action only oh, Smith cool. and Wesson boat anchor, mm -hmm. sixteen pound. I have one of those somewhere. Sixteen pound trigger. Every trigger pull was sixteen pounds. It was a single stack, right? Yep, single stack, um, and it's and and prior to the academy, uh, like we grew up around guns, hunting. You know, grandfather was like a national level guy, uh, oh, cool. skeet and trap shooter. Mm -hmm. My dad was a regional champ. Skeet well, I didn't shooter. know that about your pop. Yeah, so we um, and he loved shotgun stuff. Dave was already into pistols, uh, that kind of stuff. So I go to the academy with very minimal pistol experience. Lots of shotgun, lots of rifle, minimal pistol. Um, so I get this pistol that I know nothing else about other than that. You put the magazine in, rack the slide, you line these bumpy things up and press the trigger. And that's about all I knew. This well-known God instructor who was published in all the police magazines and all this other stuff comes up, takes my gun. And I'm having a hard time shooting it with the 16 pound trigger. <clears throat> takes my gun, aims at the eyeball of the PTI target and the round hits like right here. You know, and he goes, well, with that boat anchor, you're never going to be able to do well. Just do the best you can. Wow. And I, I immediately, immediately was like, holy shit, man. Like, I'm in trouble. I, I, I am set up for failure. You know, like, they gave me a gun that even this guy can't shoot well, <laughs> you know. And that's, uh, that's hilarious. I remember getting back to the department. And I, I passed. I shot well. I was like third in my class, even with that thing. And I get back to the department and I'm shooting a qualification and I did okay. And the guy who was the range master at the time was a sergeant. And uh, I don't know if you remember the deal at all or not, but he was our sergeant and he comes up and I'm shooting and uh, I put the gun back in the holster and I, I don't remember what I shot. It was a 50 round course of fire then and it was quite different than the one we sh mm -hmm. they shoot now. And and I had dropped like all the rounds from like the 20 and 25 yard line. I had dropped them all. And uh, so Theo takes my gun and goes, what's going on? He goes, you're just from the academy. Like you did nothing but shoot three days a week for the last 14, 12, 14 weeks. What's the problem? 
And I go, oh, this gun's a piece of crap because it's a mechanical device. Dominate that thing. Mm. And like takes it, puts a mag in it, goes boom, 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 boom. Empties the mag into the head at the 25. Nice. Hands it back to me and goes, figure it out and fix yourself. And I was like, amen. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> well, okay then. So uh, clearly, my gun's broken. Pretty much, like I'm saying, is that you're like built to shoot this gun, and I'm not. Right, you know, right, like right. I start grasping for excuses, well, but that's a, you know right. My no, electrolytes are low. Man, I needed a guy like that at that point to say to me, "Get it together, dude." Yeah, yeah. This giant in the field just put like a huge roadblock in your path, which also tells you a lot about who we. Put up on pedestals and yeah, that too, right? Yeah, yeah I'm sure, and he's a great guy. I mean, for everything else, but the but that really like gave me an excuse. It gave me an out because then I could look at him and go because his ego wouldn't let him say, "Oh, geez, I don't have enough time." Yeah, I tanked the trigger or something, yeah. you know. But so yeah, man. But I think that's like an important aspect, man. Like we were talking about in there, mm -hmm. which is it's not your gear, it's you. Mm -hmm. You know, figure it out and make it work. You are the weapon. You are the the beast behind this thing so figure it out dominate this thing and make it work for you you know mm -hmm. so yeah that's it all right guys see you later <laughs> so <laughs> but, so somebody comes to you or you and they said hey i've got uh five hours a week i want to dedicate to being better at protecting myself or my family what do they do five hours a week so basically an hour a day and no work on weekends that's kind of a lot i think for the average person that's a lot yeah, of time that's a lot of time you know i mean a lot of things go into that i mean you know you got 30 seconds 30 seconds <laughs> yeah, right. so, um, well they gotta be physically fit first of all you know so you gotta square that away they gotta be healthy see your doctor if you need that or your dentist what does physically you know? fit look like because that's kind of like a broad term right so for my definition of physically fit is that you can run a mile and a half without dying. Okay. You know, and not say 20 minutes. Um, deadlift your body weight at least. You know, bench press your body weight. Do a couple pull-ups. I don't know. Okay. I don't really, you know what I mean? Just be fit. Um, and then of course, you know, they need to have some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They need to know how to use their hands. They need to know how to, you know, fight to a weapon. Know how to use a weapon system, you know. I mean, so really what broad. would you do if you if you were if somebody was coming to you and said, "Okay, I'm going to come see you one hour every evening." What would you spend time working on? It really depends on the person. You know what I mean? I would send them to Straight Blush Jam Illinois and tell them to sign up. That's what I would actually do, you know? I mean, yeah, right? And tell them to go there and start training. Yeah. yeah right? Go to Straight Blush Jam. Like because that's such a broad question. I mean, should they practice taekwondo? If that's what's near them? Yeah. It's the dedication you to something. You see what something. I'm doing here. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna you know, besmirch another art. <laughs> that wasn't what I was saying. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not yeah. trying to besmirch an art, nor am I trying to elevate an art and say this is the best thing. Right. I think it's funny though. Like, for example, like everybody loves jujitsu now. When uh, Jeff Curran opened up his his garage gym in Crystal Lake in the '90s, everybody same thing. You said like, oh, you can't touch these guys. No, but I can shoot you in the face from 30 feet away so we get so myopic where it's like like this art is the right. art that's, that's well it gets it freaks me right back to straight blast gym so like we do the shiv works there on the on certain weekends you know and now if, you're turning this into a total sales pitch uh, it's this, not a sales pitch gym. you asked i'm telling you you know you go to the, you have like the, the shiv works you learn how to use a knife you learn the the importance of never being unarmed you know which if a, you're a boxer you're never unarmed you always get your fist if sure. you're a judo player you always got the planet to hit them with you know yeah. what i mean if you're jujitsu you can always just talk them down so you know it's just one of those things where you're always armed and sure. that is going to get you a lot further so and the physical benefits that come from rolling, you know, wrestling. I mean, you can't. That's the so you like the, the, the approach of striking and the jujitsu, the MMA. Right, yeah. right. And then the shiv works would give you the knives, and then you also would do stuff with our, our guns. You know, fighting to get our guns out to keep mm -hmm. them safe. I saw a guy uh, recently. He didn't like to carry a weapon because he didn't feel comfortable or confident enough to keep that weapon. I was afraid someone could take it away from him and use it. I've on heard him. that argument you know, before. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Like. If they can take away your weapon, then why can't they take your life mm -hmm. at any given time? So, I mean, at least fight for God's sakes, you know, fight for your, for something, you know? I feel like I could fit in another cheesecake analogy here with you. <laughs> but. I'm sure you could, <laughs> but you know, I'm just saying that like, 
you know, if I had five hours a week and I can only work, for, if I had five hours a week to work on self-defense, I'm working an hour of grappling, <laughs> you know, I'm working. Um, I like that. You know, I'm gonna work in my, my dry fire practice. You know, I'm gonna work, I guess, if I only have five hours, then my, because I work out more than five hours a week. So I'm gonna well, have clearly to. look at you. <laughs> well, so I'm gonna have to work in like, getting my heart rate up for my dry fire practice. I'm gonna do like 20 burpees and then, you know, just a couple of mag changes and then do some more burpees. Um, you know, some pull-ups, throw those in there as well. Uh, definitely gonna have to get some knife work done, you know, working on the bags. This was a very loaded you know, question, but I is. wanted to see what you'd come up with. You know, and it's funny because like when, when we ran- He's the, chomping at the bit. I know, I know. <laughs> but when we ran the gym years ago, like we didn't have a lot of money, we didn't have a lot of sponsors and stuff. So, but the guys came out of the gym and people still contacted me wanting me to run programs because mm -hmm. they got in a better shape they ever did. We had to use our imagination. You know, we had like one dumbbell and, mm -hmm. you know, and a PVC pipe, go. Yeah, it was pretty Spartan. Yeah, it was very Spartan. And, and we got the guys very strong, stronger than they'd ever been. And, you know, just doing stuff that we couldn't, we had no choice. So you guys don't need regularly to... lose fifty to hundred pounds. Right. I have a guy. I have a guy in my gym now. that's lost one hundred and twenty. Awesome. Right. Just showing up and working. That's all he does. Is so you don't need a mega gym with no. all the junk. And this is you see what I got. I mean, this right. is like I don't have all the. This is really nice. I mean, you can go on like and... websites like Body by Fish. He has body weight workouts. You know, they mm -hmm. take it literally. 20 minutes to run through these bodyweight workouts, but you will stuff. feel it for the next two days. I love that you know? stuff. Mod one, mod two. Yeah. The names of the workouts. We'll check so. that out. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I mean, and those are the stuff, those are the things you need to do that. In the meantime, you know, practice doing your, you know, reloads. So what I'm hearing from you is a holistic, broad spectrum approach. Absolutely. To the training. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But for only five hours a week, I mean, I would say get I think for a lot hours. of people though, that's a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot. I, that's, I only mention it like that. I've kind of thought like what was unrealistic. I mean, for myself, to be honest, like I try to do 30 minutes of physical, like, you know, weightlifting or something every day. I do other things like I do some calisthenics and yoga. But if I do that 30 minutes a day, I feel like yeah. I'm like minimum. I've reached like my goal. Yeah, right. 30 minutes of activity every day is pretty good. Yeah. Like it might be like just the bag or something yeah. Yeah, but i'm not going to the gym like you where you you'll leave he'll leave here and then he's like i gotta go pull a station wagon <laughs> you know it was a truck <laughs> it was a nissan rogue it's not a station wagon damn you damn you <laughs> it's, it's technically an suv right so. so so of course my my question and i'll give paul a chance like we your gym for example in elgin illinois you're going to teach what you would suggest people should be doing with their free time. But not everybody can come to hang out with one of you guys. Right. You know what I mean? Um, it, I've listed names of people like across the country, and we can do that again here of like, hey, you can check this guy out if you're in this region or that region. But mm -hmm. um, thoughts on what he just said, own thoughts. Yeah, so like an hour a day is a lot, so that's pretty generous. So, you know, I teach... Since 2000, well, the first time I taught with Craig Douglas was in Canada in 2005. So I've been doing the shiv works, coursework, my own coursework, uh, the ISR matrix stuff since the 90s, all over the country, Canada and that kind of stuff, uh, all over the place. So I've had this question a lot. Mm -hmm. So I get this question quite often from people where they're like, okay, because I'll see them for a weekend. They're not training with me for, you know, months at a time. I'll see them for 16 hours you know, Saturday, Sunday, and then almost and they show up to another course six months later somewhere. Yep. And okay. so I get this question frequently, which is how do I sustain this in between now and then I don't have a jujitsu place close to me. I don't have whatever close to me. Okay, cool. So generally what I try to do is I listen, you have to work your verbal agility and, and mental agility daily mm -hmm. because the first time you get confronted by an unknown contact, you are going to vapor lock if it's not something you do on a regular basis so you have to start being more sociable so when you go to the grocery store i want you to just strike up a conversation with the person in line next to you not a creepy conversation say, but just a conversation this is how i've met so every I, cop in the area <laughs> so i see i see you like zucchini right, right. Uh, but um Whoever's but yeah there. you know I you plant. gotta you gotta like don't be that person that stands in line at the coffee shop with their head buried in their phone doesn't look around mm -hmm. doesn't do an assessment immediately so train yourself 
all day long, every day, to walk into a room and be like, okay, that could be a weapon. I know I can get out that door, and I know I can go up there and get out that door, mm -hmm. and of course these windows, if something were to happen, like a fire, you know, something, some sort of catastrophe like were to that. happen. I'm training myself non-stop all day every day don't get mad that you didn't say that then well, it's, it's not the answering the question he's avoiding it <laughs> no, I'm, get, I'm, getting, I'm getting to the if question a candidate from Elgin would please answer the question <laughs> yeah right so then uh so then so, so you are so here's a couple things that are happening you're training your mind to think about this activity mm -hmm. which gets you more in tune with the activity so it gets I'm you that. so now you you now you are constantly like thinking about okay I am this, right? I am the protector of my family. I am the protector of myself. I am this. And so you become this. And so then when you walk through that door, never enter a space without looking into it, right? Mm -hmm. Transitional spaces is where we bite the dust. You know, whether it's jiu-jitsu, I'm transitioning from guard to side control and he gets the knee back in. Or boxing, I'm transitioning from outside to inside and he catches me, clips me as I'm moving in. Transitional spaces where we get eaten up. So. When I'm going through that door, there's glass everywhere. I'm going to look through that glass before I go out there. So now I just got another rep. Mm -hmm. Outside of my dedicated hour of training time, got another rep. I go up the stairs. What do I do? I'm going to clear the stairs. Not like ninja, like, you know, vertical displacement and all this stuff to get. No, man, I'm going to, but I'm going to walk up the stairs and just look, like head up, look. Okay, there's the angle, you know, if there's somebody coming around that corner, can I see them first? Sure. It's a game, mm -hmm. you know, keeps it interesting. Get into an elevator, I want to see that guy first. If there's somebody in the elevator waiting, you know, I want to see him before he sees me. And so you train yourself all day long to become this. A weapon. Right, yeah, I'm weaponizing myself. So, right? right? <laughs> Cobra Trump Kai, Trump. do or die. Trump. So I'm, but I'm training myself constantly, so it's outside of that hour. So I yeah. tell these guys, look, look, you're not going to get uh, a 12-week um, CQB course. Not going to happen. Right. You know, not as a regular person. So what you're going to do is you're going to train yourself every time you walk down the hall. You're checking doors, closed door, open door, pass. You know, bypass the closed door, slow down by the open door. You're training yourself to think this way, so that that switches your mindset on. So then, for your dedicated practice, I want you to do a five-minute dry fire every day what Claude Werner calls an out the door dry fire practice, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, a short to the point dry fire routine that you can build some skill with it, but you also maintain and sustain mm -hmm. skill. So you're making that deposit into your dry fire routine. So that gives me five minutes of dry fire work. Then what I want you to do is I want you to spend five minutes on your boxing skills, your stand up, whether it's kickboxing, boxing, whatever. I want you to spend five minutes working on that you know, every day just boom, boom, moving around, getting used to throwing with bad intentions. All you need for your boxing skills for most people is straight punches, straight lines dominate. So straight down the pipe, driving, you know, and bring the fist straight back to the face, not swooping, right? So developing, happened to me today. <laughs> yeah, right? developing good habits because that's the get them off of me, keep them off of me boxing skill set that you need yeah. for a street encounter. Bop, 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 and then, and then jet or access a tool go to work, all right? So then after you get your boxing skill set, now I want you to do work now five minutes of boxing to a tool. So one, two, three, access a pistol, one, two, three, access a knife, or one, two, three, access pepper spray, or access something, or one, two, three, pick up an improvised weapon because I work in a medical facility and I'm not allowed to carry a weapon. Right. All right cool, bro, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna put any limitations on you, I want you to think outside of the box. So box, 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 pick something up, boom, swing it, right? you've weaponized yourself and your environment so then so now we're into 10 minutes right so we've got 10 minutes of work in so now the next five minutes i want you to do shrimping and bridging which are essential fundamental movements to escape anything on the ground every escape in jiu-jitsu comes down to a combination of bridging shrimping and standing up so i'm going to make you do bridging shrimping and standing up technical stand-ups where you stand up safely mm -hmm. right and uh, do that for five minutes every day. Just give me that. So we got five minutes of that. That gives me my groundwork. So now we're up to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna get like another, so after that, so that's my first five. Then I'm gonna do five minutes of dedicated edge weapon work. So I want you to just take your training knife and focus mostly on accessing it. And I want you to focus on accessing and driving point driven strategies. I'm always trying to drive the point into my opponent, either you know point down or point up. And, uh, and I'm, I'm working point-driven strategies. 
Then the next five minutes, I want to work impact weapons because impact weapons work with uh, improvised weapons because most improvised weapons are going to be an impact weapon. So if like I pick up that, everything is a broadsword. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything is a broadsword <laughs> on silky pajamas. <laughs> so if I pick up that pole right there, that's that's an improvised weapon, but it's an impact weapon. Right. You know, rarely will you get an imp improvised weapon that's a a blade. You know, it's right. just not some unless you're in a kitchen. You know, but, um, so that. That takes me into what, like 25, 20, 25 minutes? Somewhere. You know, my last five minutes, I'm probably gonna do something like the old Canadian 5BX program. You know, one calisthenic for one minute, for okay. five minutes. Gotcha. So the last five minutes would be the, like I was saying, the Canadian, the old Canadian BX uh, calisthenics routine, mm -hmm. which is a one, one, so you have five calisthenic movements, five body weight movements. You do each one for one minute. What are they? It could be whatever you pick. Okay. So, like, say you pick uh, pull-ups. Yeah, pull-ups, dips, squats. You know, mountain climbers and jumping jacks. You know, and it, so one minute for each of those. That's thirty minutes, man. That's all it took of your time. Do that every day, for the next six months. Mm -hmm. You might be surprised at how good you get. Yeah. You know, you're going to be hard to hold down. A guy that can shrimp and bridge on the ground is really hard to hold down. Heck yeah. You know, right. and if he can do a stand up. He's back on his feet and accessing tools and taking the fight to me. And then if he's doing that, being sociable all day, every day, just get out of your shell, learn how to talk to people, because uh, then you also learn a whole lot about human behavior. Uh, you're not going to be tongue-tied when some dude comes up to you on the train or in a public space and is like, hey, man, you know, and wants right. to strike up a conversation with you. You'll have the ability to go, can you hold up right there for me, dude? Can you stop right there just for a second? And if they go sideways on you, go, hey man, it's nothing against you. I just don't like people up in my space. A dude that's been in jail, a dude that's been somewhere, will recognize that as, oh, right on, right on. You're a predator too. Let me go mm -hmm. elsewhere. You know, and that's half the battle, being deselected. A meat eater. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Not a vegetarian. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's half the battle, man, is just not being selected. And so, I mean, that's 30 minutes, and that's what I frequently recommend to people. That's like the, my most frequent recommendation is just a schedule just like that. 30 minutes a day, do it twice a day. Because training, the training that you access under pressure has to be recent, relevant, and realistic. True. So that's what I want. So if they give me that 30 minutes, if they can do it twice a day for that hour of timing you mentioned, if they can give me that twice a day, that's amazing. Yeah, that person will be a ninja. Yeah, they're gonna be awesome. But if they can just give me those 30 minutes every day, or three times a week, if they just carve out 30 minutes, three times a week for me, man, and just do this, right. they're gonna be a totally different animal at the end of the year. Six months, they'll be a totally different mm -hmm. animal. And the thing is that, again, recent, relevant, realistic, right? So if something were to happen after two, three weeks of that, it's recent. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that course they took right. three months ago. It's well, I what I just this? did Friday. Oh, cool, I'm gonna do it right now. Right. I like all that, what both of you said. I think oftentimes we get so like fixated on, again, like the jujitsu. Like, I just want to be a purple belt. If I can get to be a purple right. belt, like, right. well, that's great. It's you're going to wear it in, in a party? You're going right. to wear that purple belt around? Right. What, is uh, that? what does that do? <laughs> <laughs> but what does that mean in the context? I'm wearing my black belt right now. <laughs> of being in the mall shooting. Or, you know, it's not, it's, it's a solution to one. And that's the thing. If you had, speaking of mall shootings, mm -hmm. right? So, if you've spent your time thinking about, okay, well, I came in this door, but I know every one of these stores has a back door that goes to an access right hallway where people right. bring in supplies, inventory, I can get out of here if there's a shooting right now. I'll mm -hmm. grab my kids and we'll roll out right. and we'll, we'll ghost this place. Probably the, the only thing that we didn't talk about was people having some medical training, which is a whole nother podcast, but right. we were talking about fighting, not saving. Yeah. Right. It's all related though. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's all related. related. I mean, and, and you can, it seems to be, it's, nowadays they seem to integrate it more. Like, you know, if you are talking to one group, there's gonna be people there who give you medical training as well. So, you I mean, it. it's not as hard to, mm -hmm. to find as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's coming around. Yeah. And then the confidence that you get too, you're talking about being deselected. I just gotta throw the story in there. It's like, I had a kid come to me for my kid's class and his dad brought him because he was being bullied. And then like a month later, his dad's like, oh, he got in trouble today by the bus driver. I asked the kid, like, what happened? And he's like, oh, well, the, the kid who was picking on me found out that I was taking karate, so he started picking on another kid, and I threw it in my fist. 
And then the bus driver said that I was bullying him. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, it all worked out. It's like the confidence that he developed just from taking the class, the confidence that you'll get just from doing the, knowing that you have that skill set accessible mm -hmm. whenever you need them. That's going to keep you from being selected as a victim. I think sometimes people take that where then they become too, too switched on. Mm -hmm. Right. Dave Spaulding tells a story about being at like dinner after class with guys and like one of the dude got up to use the bathroom and like, like walk <laughs> like around the table and they all I told him not to tell that story I'm like, no, no, it's too <laughs> so I got Greg Alfred just wrote an article about uh, he goes to concerts all the time right like every, he always, everybody reads his concert going stories and he, plain clothes he and his wife I think they were near his house in Ohio somewhere uh, girlfriend don't do that to oh, him sorry girlfriend yeah don't do that to him so he uh, notices these two homeless dudes I mean I love my wife and I'm happily married <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're slowly moving. It's my aura, dude. Right. So, so he my, notices my space. two um, two homeless dudes propped up outside this theater or auditorium where they're going, and kind of caught his eye. Noticed that they got fancy shoes on, like nice running shoes, and he knew that they were undercover cops or like from. Department of Homeland Security or something out there looking for terrorism. So he said he kind of like locked eyes on him for a minute and then they looked at him and are like, is this guy keying into us? Mm -hmm. So he gets to thinking about it, like sometimes being, exuding that predator switched on meat eater yeah, mentality, yeah. Mm -hmm. sometimes may get the wrong person to pay attention to you. It was kind of an interesting read, like in that sense, of course, like then he said, funny enough though, when he came out later, there were two other homeless dudes there watching the same <laughs> corner, yeah, you know, right? the guy switched out their ship. But, but like, sometimes I think we take that. I just wanted to add that, that attitude, like, you know, or now all of a sudden people are paying attention to you that shouldn't have been. Paying. No, it's got to be relaxed, yeah. right. relaxed awareness, you know, just, no, nah, you got to be right. cool and just be relaxed. And the better you get at it, the more relaxed you become about it. Yeah. Just you know? knowing that you can. Yeah. Like that. you should be able to go into a, like into a building or a restaurant or anything like that and figure it out real quick. Like does the, the place has a kitchen, they're going to have a back door. Mm -hmm. All right, chill, bro. Right. Like that's your other way. If something catches fire, like the E2 tragedy in Chicago, mm -hmm. right? The place catches, not catches fire, but a guy pepper sprays people, causes a massive stampede into the one exit that you came in. And so you think, well, that's the only way out. Well, they had a bar. They serve food. Right. That means somewhere a truck driver at some point in time is bringing inventory in. Right. He's not coming through the front door. So find that place and get out. You know? We used to do that with the kids when they were younger. Like, where do we go? We'd play that Oh, I thought game. you meant pepper spray him. Yeah. I did it to my kids. Like, Dine and Dash, what are we like, talking about? Hey, I'm like, hey, Dorian, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> Toughen up, kid. Toughen up. <laughs> Do no, some push-ups. Going to the movie theater yeah. or wherever. Yeah. Hey, this place caught fire. Where are we going? Yeah, it's a good one. And yeah. just like, you know, we'd have that conversation or sitting in a restaurant. We still do sometimes. Where are you going? You know, walking into the airport or whatever. Yeah. Right. We're on this airplane. There is no exit. What yeah, are we doing? I always tell my kids, stay here. Someone will come for you. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right. yeah but no, that's a good you. thing to do because it's not only that but you know not so much up here but in uh south florida you had hurricanes mm -hmm. you know tropical storms and stuff and that stuff's no joke mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh and up here you have to uh, tornadoes there's always fire you mm -hmm. know that kind of stuff so there's natural disasters there's things that can happen um have a plan yeah you know but don't like you were saying man don't be that guy don't be yeah. a lot of people are that this guy. dude just be chill about it. It's so easy. If you can do all that and not get, and, and the people with you can't pick up that you just figured out, okay, there's a door there. That door is an emergency exit. That door over there has a bolt, on, bolt lock on it, so it's probably better to go to that door. Pick all those things up, right. you know, like without everybody around you being like, oh, he's scanning. Right. He's scanning. He's obviously in yellow. Right. You know, yeah. like, chill, dude. There's always that one dude, though, that tells you, like, I've already figured out how to kill everybody in here. You right. Know, like, Right. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Probably should relax, man. Right. Probably get out more. Maybe you should travel. Right. Right. You know, like uh, go visit some other countries. And, Which uh, kind of brings us back to like where we started. Like, like, what is the goal? Is it to be like super protector or to actually like enjoy your life? To be able to do whatever I want and not worry about it. Yeah. Like, exactly. I'm, I'm not too concerned. You know, yeah. if something steps off. I have complete faith in my in myself and my ability to handle. You should. You're to, 
his and brother. The, right. Yeah, that too. <laughs> you know, I got, you, we should all have that complete faith in our ability to solve the problem, whatever it is. You know, whether it's a medical problem, whether it's, or worse, yeah. you know. The medical stuff is a big deal. I have, you tell your story of the unfortunate, the very large person that you had to drag from the burning car right. and realize that your grip strength was subpar for a grown man. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's not exactly what I said. <laughs> well, that's exactly how I heard the story. That's what, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. It's not exactly what I heard. No, but, no to, but to the point was that sometimes we are put into these situations where it's like doesn't even seem like that big a deal. You had to pull somebody out of a burning car right. and it was hard for you to do because they were heavy. Well, that and like she was wearing very loose clothing, so I ended up like stripping her clothes off of her. So once I got rid of the clothes, then it was easy to no, you get a hold is, of a hand. Right. Or wrist which is or not like combative, it's not right. shooting, it's not terrorism, it's right. Right. car on a car on a problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's like my danger was the car. There wasn't a person attacking me. It was, you know, it's the fire. It kill you pretty bad though. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That yeah. chemical shit storm in there with all the stuff burning and Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not yeah. poison. It's not good, man. <laughs> that's, well, that's real poison. Yeah, that's real so. poison. Kind of almost as bad as the 80s band. Yeah. Almost as bad. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a th I hated them. They Who suck. poison? Yeah, they're they so bad. But almost as bad as Warrant. But we'll talk about metal another time. <sighs> but uh, but yeah, they, uh, that's, a, you know, that, that's a whole other, other issue to talk about. But it's yep. just having that knowledge, knowing that you can take care of yourself. That you can be safe anywhere you go Take like hey man i can travel to another country i actually had this conversation with a guy recently he's like so i travel to another country how should i uh arm up when i'm over there i go i don't know dude go to a store and buy a phillips screwdriver and put it in your pocket right. i don't know man <laughs> you know I go, like i go flathead but yeah yeah whatever you know but i'm like uh you know maybe just enjoy some sightseeing and realize that you can at any point in time pick something up and swing it pretty hard mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. chill bro Right. Yeah, enjoy that, your life. That's what I'm talking about. People fixate so much on that, or I will never travel to Europe because I can't take my right. 19 and my appendix rig. Yeah. And well, if you're in France, there's probably some little, you know, French dude nearby you can pick up by the ankles and just start, <laughs> <laughs> start swinging with them around, wailing on people. But nothing he's, against he's French, French, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just, nothing against French people, <laughs> other than the whole surrender of everything. Yeah. Thing. But um, <laughs> but no, but I said I like it. <laughs> Yeah, why are we fighting? Right. But that's the thing. Like you should be able to enjoy your life. That's what this is all about. That's this what should I'm be saying, about right. making you right. as as capable as possible, as much of an adept as possible, that you can like enjoy your life, man. Get out there and do some mm -hmm. stuff and, mm -hmm. and see the world, man. It's a it's a it's a wonderful place out there. It's not all it is. it's not all dark and demons, man, despite what the news wants to tell us. Right. I mean it's it's just one of those things where you know, money in the bank is security, having these skill set. It's security, and that's all it is. And then mm -hmm. you can, you know, you don't have to worry about it. Put that off the table and enjoy, you know, a nice sunny day. I you know? want to. We're going to the apple orchard today. Are you? Those, uh, what are those um, donuts? The um, apple cider apple donuts? Apple cider donuts. donuts. Yeah. You got to eat some of those for me, dude. I will. Channel those. Those <laughs> things are awesome. Delightful. Yummy. Delightful. Yummy. And if you take like a little bit of vodka and put it in the apple cider. It's you good. don't even drink. <laughs> right. yeah. He's always got the drinking jokes. I do have the drinking right. jokes because I don't drink anymore. I don't drink. I don't Your do face. that. Yeah. I know, man. It's, uh, it's just a... Uh, if you've met my sister, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, it's just a bad, I don't, it's just not a thing I do. It's okay. I'm not so, judging yeah. you. No, I'm no, not. I am. Yeah. But, a lot of people do. It's kind of funny. How do people find your gym? If they wanted to find your gym, my gym is in Elgin. So it's at 1341 Manor Court in Elgin, website? Illinois. We have a website. It's sbgillinois.com. It stands for straight blast gym, straight blast, gym. which is you guys, the, the organizations around the country, glo yep. globe even? International. Global, yeah, international. So, um, yeah, we're, we're all over the place. I was the third guy. Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, I was the third guy outside of Portland to become a straight place gym instructor. So that's kind of cool. Awesome. You can say you know me if you ever run into somebody. That and three bucks, you can get a coffee. Yeah, that coffee. and three or four bucks, <laughs> you'll get some coffee. You know? At Starbucks. Yeah, your Uber driver will probably pretend McDonald's. to be interested. Right. Um, How about you? Do you want to be found? No, I'm, I mean, I'm, no, I don't want to be found. <laughs> I'm good doing what I do, man. <laughs> no. no. Don't look for me. Yeah. Yeah, right? You can't handle the truth. No, no, it, 
No. Go to a school parking lot on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> when you see a minivan getting pulled. <laughs> yeah, it's like my neighbor. She's like, I drove by, I saw this guy, and I was like, Who's this idiot pulling a car in a school parking lot? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> then I thought, I bet that's Dave. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, it's a good thanks, time. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah. So, did he have jean shorts on? Yes or no? Shorts. Yeah, absolutely. No. No. I, Are they the cutoffs? Yes. Yes. That's even better. Right. That's even better. Daisy Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't, I don't know. No, I don't want you to find me. That no. was you're like, no. 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 I mean, with my line of work right now, I'm, I'm busy enough. Enough people find me that need me. Should so. we fuzz your face out this whole time? <laughs> yeah. yeah right. I'm actually, I'm, yeah, I'm, right? I'm, I'm a Navy SEAL Green Beret. So, few you know. people know about this. Right. Yeah, right. So top so, secret. I'm actually Even SAS. Congress doesn't know about they it. Know. Even Congress no, I'm doesn't off book. know. I like that one. Yeah. Off book. I dealt yeah. with a guy the other day who said he was an off book Marine Recon Green Beret. I was like, cool, dude. Was he one of our local homeless people? Off book. Yeah. yeah. I like those guys. Yeah, he's off book. So he was off of something, but you know, good times. Funny. I appreciate you guys taking the time to have this uh, meandering conversation. <laughs> that uh... Thank you so much for <laughs> mailing us the questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I think we covered a lot of good stuff. I think more importantly, though, uh, we learned that you can't say no to cheesecake. No, you have it issues. Was, it you was have a, an eating problem, man. It was the experience with my nephew. You, you, you have an eating issue, man. <laughs> you have problems with food, bro. Right. Thank you, gentlemen. So, I appreciate yeah, it. Thank um, you. What I'd like to do at some point is we come down and do some footage at the gym. Yeah, we can do like that. Like when you're doing one of the shiv works classes. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, man. We could do that. Yeah. If you guys uh, haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do, uh, and share these with your friends. Some of the stuff that we're passing on, yeah, we're having jokes, we're laughing, but it could save your life or the life of somebody that you care about if you apply it. If not, and it's just education uh, from an uh, entertainment standpoint, <laughs> oh, that was a good ending. I like it. That's I'm wonderful. digging it. That's, 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 that's how I say goodbye to Tell my you kids. What, Visit our website, kerrytrainer.com, for information about classes held throughout the U.S., Kerry Trainer Apparel, and upcoming projects. You can also email us at training at kerrytrainer.com for information about setting up your own private course or speaking engagement. Training at kerrytrainer.com or kerrytrainer.com.